Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you're here, subscribe, like, and share us with your network. So as you know, not only did everyone start building a business in 2023, but people also started building these nonprofits. How cool. Nonprofits are an amazing way to help people in your community, to help people who are less fortunate, to help people do the things that make them successful by you being all that you can be to be successful. But how do you start? A nonprofit. Well, let me introduce you to somebody who not only does it, but mm -hmm. also helps you do it to you all. Y'all, please say hello to my friend, Miss Barbara Logan. Hey, Barbara. Hello, hello. Thank you so much, Ricky, for having me today. Oh my gosh, well, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> I am excited because this is really cool. You hear about people starting these nonprofits all the time, but very few people know where to begin. So Barbara, let me ask you, how did you get started with working with nonprofits? How did I get started? It, um, well, with my nonprofit, it began with a burden. It started off as a women's ministry. And as the ministry began to grow, the involvement of the community got bigger and deeper. And so one of the things that I came across was running um, against these legal barriers. Because I was not an organization, I either had to collaborate with other like-minded organizations within the scope of work, or, you know, you were just out of luck. Out there, so yeah. that's how the burden started. Um, wow. From there, I utilized my education, my background education in business administration, the contract development portion. And that's when Sisterhood Ministry launched. As soon as I finished my degree, I had asked God, what am I supposed to be doing with this degree? Mm -hmm. And from there, that transitioned open of, how many other ministries in the military community, mm. that's where that thought came from, mm. of how these outreach organizations, but are still hitting the same legal barriers. Yeah. So that's when I launched Sisterhood Ministry to help others. That is so awesome. So when you started and the ministry, it's actually your 501c3 and your business is called Sisterhood Ministries. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Now, do you work only with ministries? at all or do so, you work with anyone who's working on or doing a 501c3 I specifically work with small organizations small nonprofits so those maybe those who are wanting to start a nonprofit organization mm -hmm. or maybe they started the paperwork but now they're looking to for various ways to grow so I do mm -hmm. um proposals for grant research. Mm -hmm. I help do uh, collaboration contracts so that way they can navigate in their spec of work and move forward with that. So it is both with the military community and my local community as well. Yeah. I, I think that is so great because there are a lot of small businesses, myself included, who mm -hmm. we are really good at what we do and we really want to find a way to help the community, but we have no freaking idea how to get that started. <laughs> Right. It can yeah. be challenging. Yeah, I For know sure. it is. And so one of the challenges I know that people have, and you alluded to it earlier, is the legal aspect of it. Mm -hmm. What kind mm -hmm. of barriers are there or hurdles do small businesses have to jump over to get to get through some of those legal issues? Well, one of the things that I've came across just with working with my community here in El Paso is knowing the, the speck of work that you're trying to do. Because mm -hmm. one of the challenges I've seen is, you know, you have this heart to serve, right. but then you're all over the place and now <laughs> your donors don't even know what you're doing. And so my thing is to help them really hone in on their niche of what they're trying to do, who they're trying to help, right? Your target audience, mm -hmm. because that's going to play a determination of how you're going to build your nonprofit. Will you have members? Are you creating a, a, some type of program where, you know, uh, maybe 
more the less fortunate could uh, apply to or so it just goes based off of your scope of work so those are one of the barriers that I've came across another one is how to formulate the paperwork mm -hmm. sometimes just I mean if you ever went to the irs.gov they have all the publications there but mm -hmm. my god it is so much reading so what I do is I do the reading for you right I put it all together in a nice bow and I said here are the specs that you're trying to go by your vision mm -hmm. by your mission and then I collaborate those things because it's the paperwork the paperwork can be so intimidating mm -hmm. of of uh, what codes you would be wanting to use to start a nonprofit? Where do I even find this information? And mm -hmm. that part can be a little challenging. Yeah. Um, I know you would have to start, you know, basics with your, get your tax identification number. But sure. when we go into the paperwork, mm -hmm. that's the part that gets a little challenging. I can imagine. And, and, and mm -hmm. it's so hard, especially when you're working on building a business. One of the things you said, I thought was so incredibly interesting, you know, we as small businesses and most people, you have a heart to serve, but you can't serve everybody. You can't do everything. So what you're saying mm -hmm. that you do is you help people kind of focus in on who do you, who do you actually want to serve? Because again, we want to do something and we want to help in some way. But if you don't know who you want to help and you, if you're like, I tell people, if you say you want to help everybody, you ain't helping nobody. Right. right you need to get specific we'll pull that in yeah <laughs> that is so funny so Barbara how long have you been helping people do this so I would say it started in 2018 okay. I began the initiative of community building um, it started off with event planning uh, collaborations within the communities creating proposals and solicitations. That's how it started right. before I even became a nonprofit. So it was already like, I was already cultivating it and I didn't even know I was doing that. <laughs> it was just my heart to serve the community, my heart yeah. to give and, and be a part, be part mm -hmm. of community. And me being a military spouse, it can be challenging um, from one duty station to the next because sure. you have these cultural barriers and I say the only way you're going to be able to create community is you get involved and right. then it becomes your community so as I was developing that area that's how I began starting so yeah it started through ministry and then mm -hmm. I developed that process through yeah through I, I, that's so that is so great and do you know like right off since 2018 how many other small businesses have you helped I know one in particular because I refer you all the time you know that but <laughs> I would say I have helped about, I wouldn't say maybe a good dozen, awesome. a good dozen since yeah. 2018. Yeah. Um, these are, again, local small nonprofits. Mm -hmm. They have either started their nonprofit business mm -hmm. or um, they needed help with the paperwork and creating a nonprofit business. I've had nonprofits that have been doing it for X amount of years, but now they're ready to expand uh, maybe a, a program or a project. Mm -hmm. So I've helped them with their proposals in the grants where the, the um, county has able to fund some of these programs. Wow. I have been on, and I'm still currently on several local nonprofit boards mm -hmm. uh, in different spectrums from women's shelter to sex trafficking to um, food pantries. I, I get myself involved in these organizations so I can mm -hmm. see the heart of it yeah. And help others who want mm -hmm. to have that same driven mindset. Yeah. yeah. But so what you're pretty much saying is there is money available to help nonprofits. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, when you have a vision mm -hmm. and you put it out there, you drive that vision yeah. and the community gets involved. You would be surprised that most of your donors come from mm -hmm. your support system than it does these large corporate. Mm -hmm. Most of your donors are the community that sees what you're doing and mm -hmm. wants to participate in the giving. They may not be able to volunteer their time, so then they might right. monetarily give. And mm -hmm. so it's the way you, you orchestrate and market your vision. It's the way that you get yourself involved in particular programs, projects, or even events right. to show what the cause is, how to develop our city, and then make it mm -hmm. prosperous, grow. So that's yeah. what I've seen. Man, it, it, 
There's so much involved in this and so few people are aware that one, you're out there or that there are folks out there like you that can help them. So, mm -hmm. you know, say you have a small business that comes to you and like, please help us because we have no idea what we're doing. And I've tried these other people. What makes sisterhood so different in this particular space in helping these small businesses? One, I believe it's the consultation, first of all. I am always wanting to hear the heart of the person mm -hmm. because uh, the chemistry also connects. Is this somebody that I can actually help and help navigate with their, their vision? And so what makes me different is the heart of communication, the way we sit down and communicate. I am not geared towards the money because, you know, small businesses, we're, you know, we're starting from scratch. Uh, we need those resources. We need that community. If I can't help you, well, then maybe I will know somebody that can help you. And so this is what makes us different is the intentionality, oh. I think. The so intentionality that of it. So, <laughs> if, so one of our small business owners that are watching, they are like, you know, I, I don't know what to do. I don't even know where to begin. So if you could give one of our small businesses three simple starting tips, what would okay. they? So the first one would be to write out your mission and your vision. Mm. Okay. That yeah. would be the first. That's good. Your second tip would be to create a, a history log of, of what you have done so far for the community or what is that scope based off the mission and vision that you're trying to get involved with. Because a lot of the times we do what we do mm. because of a burden that we have inside. So good. There's a burden, there is a hurt, there might be their pain, there might be something that you have overcame that mm. you want to give back into the community because it inspired you. And so that would be the second one. And mm. then the third one is when starting your nonprofit, think about your inner circle team. I can't stress this enough. You will have, see, the difference between a, an LLC and your nonprofit is one is, is an individual based business right mm -hmm. it does help the community of course mm -hmm. but the nonprofit is a community driven based business so therefore you want to be very selective on who mm -hmm. is going to be your board who's going to sit there understand the vision and the mission don't start any of the paperwork until you have your inner circle who Ooh. understand what the vision is who mm -hmm. will not take it and corrupt it who will not try to turn it or take it and then drop it but understand mm -hmm. what you're trying to do the mission at hand those would be the three things so you've got your mission and vision first what is the sc scope of that burden that has caused you to do what you're doing now mm -hmm. and the third most important i couldn't stress it more than enough your board of directors so who good. is your main inner circle that's going to yeah. drive this with you mm -hmm. i don't know about y'all but if y'all aren't feeling the enthusiasm <laughs> for what it is she's doing I, I don't know what's wrong with you i really don't drink more coffee <laughs> barbara if somebody wanted to work with you or at least continue the conversation how could they find you okay so first we got to go to the website the mm -hmm. website, www.sisterhoodministry.com. Again, sisterhoodministry.com. Mm -hmm. Or you can email me at info at sisterhoodministry.com. Okay. We would set up an appointment. We'll do a consultation and then we would go from there. I love it. Y'all, there is so much here going on right now. I don't have a nonprofit <laughs> and I think I need to start one right now. I mean, true story. Yeah, but on. don't forget y'all, if y'all did not get that information, don't worry, everything will be in the description below. And don't forget while you're here, like, subscribe and share our content as well. <gasps> Barbara, my friend, before <laughs> I let you go, we gotta play right. a game. <laughs> okay, let's okay. do it. So this game is called This or That, really simple. I'm just going to give you the choice of a few things, and you, off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play? Let's do it. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. or oatmeal um oatmeal all right yellow light slow down or speed up speed up <laughs> i'm not even gonna get into the problems with that okay 
uh, shopping online or in store? Mm -hmm. Online. All right. Airplane, window seat or aisle seat? Window. Toilet paper roll, over or under? Over. All right. Now, house slippers or bare feet? House slippers, of course. Yeah. I love the, of course. What? I don't know where camera, <laughs> who hurt you. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> All right. TikTok or Twitter? Uh, TikTok. All right. Exercise or extra fries? Exercise. All right. Reality TV. Yes, please. Or I really just can't. I, I just can't. <laughs> Me neither, though. I, I really cannot in, in my mind, but whatever. <laughs> Prince or Michael Jackson? Oh, Prince. Okay. Mm. Super Bowl, mm -hmm. the game or the commercials? Definitely the commercials. I know, right? Ugh, it depends <laughs> on who's playing for me. And finally, what is one thing about you that you wish people knew? Uh, one thing I, which I wish I would know is the love I have for women's ministry. I have a, just a big heart for women's ministry. Um, in fact, that's how I got to know who my Lord and Savior is, Jesus Christ, through women's Bible study. I tell people all the time, I met Jesus in the south side of at a local Wendy's because of women's ministry. So I would love to just put that out there. That that right. is one thing about me. <laughs> <laughs> Again, y'all, if y'all have not seen or heard the enthusiasm, what are you doing instead? <laughs> Barbara, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you, my friend. Absolutely. It's been a blessing. Thank you so much, Ricky. Oh, my joy. Y'all, that's it for this time. But don't worry. We'll be back next week with more Faith on Friday Presents. <laughs>